Fresh pop. Fresh pop to get it rolling. So really, none of these guys come without their baggage and their scrutiny. Like all of these top four or five guys, all you know, somebody thinks you're dumb for liking this certain one player X at at one or two, and now this guy thinks you're dumb. Um, There's but, been so much fluctuation pre and post combine with people's opinions. Sure, and, and really just the quite, whole time, it's quite draining. Right. So let's let's start off with with one who's you know takes a fair amount of scrutiny, especially if you don't like him. Um, part of the reason is, is well, Calvin Ridley is old. <laughs> Should have been out of the game years ago, but he can't go home because he hates his wife. You seen her? She's the one of the Christmas parties <laughs> getting plastered. <laughs> calls him a retard. <laughs> a little liar, liar for you, but yeah. So he's that is, he's twenty three. He's, he's like only a couple months younger just, than Amari Cooper is. Just turned twenty three in December. Amari Cooper's like twenty three and a half. Or so something. definitely a little bit of knock on him, and p- people like their players young. There's some ageists sure. out there. Um, and then, of course, the combine happens and, you know, some more of the people who were probably in the more uh, kind of metrics, you know, analytic community really use some of the back half of the combine here to, to say that it wasn't really that great. And, you know, worst spark score of all the wide receivers. Right. So th- that's worst a, broad or vert jump of any wide receiver ever. Maybe that's another you know, knock on this guy that, that yeah. people don't like about him. Um, but he, yeah, did, they he asked had, him he had about a great, it. a great quote in there though, that <laughs> he said, they asked him about, you know, his poor vert, vertical and broad jumps. And he was like, quote, I don't get into a receiver stance and broad jump before I run a route. <laughs> <laughs> That's the shit I would say. Solid answer. Yeah. There. I like, I like that answer. Good for you. <laughs> and then it's like, Oh, well, you know, you are going to have to go back to the tape and, and check that out to make sure everything was, you know, that this is does this put a sour taste in your mouth? It's like no. I, what I saw on tape was that this is one of the guys who has the crispiest route running available sure. out of out of any of these guys. Like when the first thing that comes to mind when I'm talking about uh, Calvin, Calvin Ridley, Ridley is just smooth operator, mm. a little sade for you. Yeah, um, you're a much I, better singer than I am. I think he's a uh, a route running technician. He's super fluid and. You, you got to love that and respect that part of his game. I also think he's very versatile and he, he kind of can do everything, everything you ask of him, not only move around on the field, but do, you know, all sorts of things, little things, big things. Sure. All yeah. that kind of stuff. What, what, what do you got to elaborate on on some of those things? How much time you got, buddy? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's uh, man. You just you set it up a lot. There. There's a lot to talk about with his versatility and his, the fluidness of, of, of his whole entire game. Um, this is a guy who was a five-star recruit coming out of high school. Sure. He was the number one wide receiver coming out of high school. Probably in. just because he was so old coming out of high maybe, school. Maybe. Maybe he didn't. Uh, he only played like three games in his senior year. He had some age things happen. I didn't dig too much deeper into why he was old enough. He seems like a, a smart dude, and we'll get into some of that a little bit later. But we, we talked about how the consensus is that he blew the combine, but he still ran a four four three and a six eight eight three cone drill. Under seven. Right? So that's speed and agility that is an awesome combination, and that definitely shows up on the field for right. sure. Right. So it's not just that he goes and athlete performing like a athletics on an underwear. Right. When you look look at the tape, you see the right. speed and you see the agility and you see how much that makes an impact on the field. Yeah, the play speed is awesome. Um, and then he got he got criti- I, I guess this was a compliment here by old Lance Zerloin. Uh, they ca- he called it. He said he had a wiry, strong frame. Yeah, you you don't want to get into it. The, the wiry guy is the guy you don't want to fight. Right. He's the guy that all of a sudden you'll end up just in a rear naked choke. Right. And you're just out and you don't even you wake up and you're like, what the hell happened? Sure. <laughs> so he's, he's only like 190 pounds, but, you know, he plays bigger than that. And that's solid muscle. He's he's a pretty strong dude. Yeah, he's just like one big twitchy muscle. Right. I, uh, I, I enjoy the route running in the hands. He's super quick off the line of scrimmage. He's got a variety of really nice release moves. Feet are super quick. He's clean in and out of his breaks. We talked about how he's probably the best route runner of, of all these wide receivers we're going to talk about. You see him beating press coverage. You see him beating man coverage. You see him You see him sitting down in zones and, and making himself available for the quarterback. Um, I he just I've watched him beat up on Clemson for years now. We, we press cover – all yeah. over the field. He's he's lining that up all Brent over the Venables field. Defense is, right. is usually solid. There's always somebody in his face and he was making us look silly. Like I didn't 
I didn't want to like Calvin Ridley when I started watching him because I don't like Alabama. They really, they really grind my gears because they're just so good. And you know, as a Clemson alumni, they're just it's really tough to take. But at least we got him once. That's nice, right? But I mean, I've watched Calvin Ridley just beat us up, and, I, and like I didn't want to like him. And as soon as you turn on the tape, it's it's hard yeah. not to. Yeah, well, he's got the full bag of moves. Like he's got he's got a head fake. He's got a little leg drag. He's got. Really quick cuts in and out of things. He's you know he knows how to use all of his different gear, set up plays uh, with with different gearing and and exploit angles and then explode. Uh, I like I like this little first uh, quick move and then up the field after he catches the ball very quickly. Those those are all kind of things that that I saw that to go along with with what you're saying there. Absolutely, he's he's not afraid to go over the middle. He's a handsy catcher. He snatches that ball. He's sure. a ball snatcher. Um, <laughs> And you mentioned what he does after the catch. Like he he can stop and start on a dime. He's awesome after the catch. Like he didn't you don't see as much of it in in the later years, but like especially his freshman year, they were getting him the ball like any way they could. Like just get the ball in his hands. Um because he can he can he's a he's a he's a flash, but not in the pan. Like he's right. it's not because that's bad, right? If you're a yeah. flash in the pan. But he's that flash part though, he's up the field he's so a long quickly. sizzle. Right. Nice. Um and and you really saw they were just getting this, a bunch of screens. He's a threat to take it to the house. Um, I just I love the, I love the after the catch ability. He can, it's, he it's can really do solid, anything from any spot on the field. Right, so versatile, which is kind of what we led this thing off with. Um, and he's also he's also smart. He's a smart guy. Right. I I that's definitely a huge part of of the game that I like. It seems that he knows how to work a defense. He knows where to take his route. Uh, you know, he'll he'll use his eyes and get them back to the quarterback to get the defenders to think the ball's coming at that point to get them to move toward him and then he'll exploit that space and take it into that empty zone or or if the man was kinda coming down and uh I think that that's a that's a solid trait from a from a receiver, a little nuance out of out of uh Ridley there. Absolutely. Um he's he's just he's he's a headsy player. There's this play that comes to mind. Um I forget who the who it was against, but it was a. Uh, they were on like the red zone. They're on like the goal line, the three or four yard line, and it was like this jet sweep. He comes in motion and cuts in front of the quarterback, but the ball was hiked way too early, and it was like basically the ball was on him all of a sudden, and he wasn't like ready to catch it. That wasn't the design of the play. It was a little bit behind him, and it could have very well been a fumble and a right. turnover in the worst possible spot on the field because you know that they're they're on the three yard line but instead of the fumble he sees it it's behind him he makes like an awkward juggling catch but secures it right and then he's already you know in motion so he accelerates around the edge and then dives into the end zone for a score so he took what what should have been a fumble on a b- bad play yeah either an a huge loss snap, or a turnover right he turns it into a touchdown right this is the kind of guy he is man I, I i love everything i see from calvin ridley the more and more i i dig into to what's going on with him one of the best things is really maybe the I don't know if it's his best attribute, but it's a solid attribute is is the way that he just never gives up on a play. Sure. Yeah, no, I, th- I think he's he consistently keeps working on long, broken kind of playground. He plays crushes the scramble. Drill. Yeah, just really helps his quarterback out. Yeah, I mean, he's going to come back to the ball super hard. Um he just he just keeps that play alive like that was that touchdown against Al, uh, against Georgia in the, in the national championship like that wasn't supposed to go to him he was the first read on the play to the right he's running this little slant and the defender the safety's there waiting for him and so the quarterback takes his eyes off of him runs the other way and sees a, a running back kind of streaking the opposite direction in the end zone and Ridley just runs the length of the freaking end zone to the other side and then jumps that route basically a hell, of a, a hell of a grab and catches a touchdown i don't even think it was intended for him but he's sure. like i'm not giving up on this play i'm about to go make this play absolutely and it's just awesome and like the whole offense basically runs through this guy yeah no this is like when you look at what what they were doing like and it's you, not a secret alabama right. likes to run the ball they do like to run the ball and when you look at the stats this year i mean they the, the attempts were way back with Jalen Hurts this year. It's also not a secret that Jalen Hurts isn't the best right. passer. But what you saw was you, you know that Calvin Ridley's getting the ball. When you look at the, the rest of the receptions on the team, Calvin Ridley's up at 60-some, and the rest of the team... The next closest guy is at 17. Is Bo it's Scar- yeah, the Bo running back. Yeah, right. And the ne- all the other receivers are at like 14. All so of them have 14 catches. Every coordinator and head coach out there knows that 
in a big situation in these games when they need something that it's most likely going to Ridley like that. That's not something that they didn't just skip over and not know that that wasn't part of the, like the right. game plan. And this is what Alabama does. Like Ridley's getting the ball. Like this is one of the guys, like this is the team that's everybody's Super Bowl every right. year on the docket. This is yep. when they say yeah, Alabama and then to then this guy be the receiver that, you know, is the go-to guy right. is, is just extremely, um, he's a gamer, right? He's, he's a, he's a, Solid gamer. He's a gamer. He's the best, one of the best players on the best team in the nation. And when they needed a play, they went to right. him time and time again. And right. he was delivering right. over and over again in the biggest spots when they needed him the most. Going up against, you know, we mentioned him being probably the best route runner of all these dudes. Well, he was facing the toughest competition right. of all these wide receivers. And we're going to talk just about just like we were talking. Yeah, tough and having the fa- the toughest competition, and all, you know, all the coverage is getting rolled to his side. Just to right. go There's along with else what we were just saying, right? Exactly. Like you, you know that teams are looking at all those kind of numbers. They know what's going on, um, and you know you have a, you have a guy here who, in his freshman year, broke Amari Cooper's uh, freshman receiving record. Like very impressive. And Jake Coker was the guy throwing him the ball. Much more attempts from Jake Coker. A little bit more of a like gunslinger. A little bit more of an opened up offense. And then you mentioned Jalen Hurts. He's a guy. He's not a gunslinger. Like Mm-mm. what they try to do is play mistake free clean football don't force it with Jalen Hurts and, right and, which they did he only had one turnover one, one turnover one interception and I, I mean believe. Coker threw for 3100 plus in that freshman season with uh with Ridley here and, and I don't think uh I don't think Hurts ever really I think 2700 yeah. was the most he had had um in, in yards in a year so you know just not quite the same amount of gunslinging that went on his his freshman year for Ridley and then you know but to still keep up pretty consistent numbers and then this year you saw the the average go up like so less Less receptions but but a bigger total amount of yards and never been a crazy amount of TDs but he'll get him down there and then they'll punch it in with a run right you know or or, or go away from him with 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 somebody else so but he'll scramble around and make the play though man I love that um another thing we never miss a good interview here married to the game we're solid looking looking to see how these guys can talk to the press and and what their attitude is when they're when they're speaking, and this dude is is a humble man. He's he is a team first attitude kind of guy. He just wants to work hard. He doesn't even really want to talk about himself too much. And then you see this on the field because he was asked to block a ton, right? And he's and, and like he's just blocking his ass off the whole game. He does his job, bides his time until finally his numbers called to get the ball thrown. And that way. that kind of goes right into another thing that I let off with when he says he does, you know. All the small right. things. I didn't that know you what to start him. with right. when you said he's versatile. I'm like, man, where do we even start right. here? That, that, this is one of the small things Absolutely. that is actually a big thing. Right. This dude's out there putting double moves on a wide receiver or on a defensive back to clear him out of the way right. when he knows it's a running play. He knows damn well the ball's not going to him. You ve- rarely see a route ran at full speed with with all the emphasis, like a normal looking route when right. he knows it's a running play. The he boys, wants you- his team to succeed. Right. And he's taking his guy out of the play so that his guy can't make the tackle. Right. And, and every once in a while, his guy makes a tackle. But, I mean, when you've got a 4-1 to one rushing versus passing ratio like, and you're asked to block that much, you're not going to win them all. But, I mean, I like that. I like that. Teams aren't going to – that's not going to be a negative thing, the blocking, right. the willingness to block, the, the willingness to get better. Um, this, this dude – like the, the wide receiver coach, Bill or Napier, you know, Compared him to Mari Cooper, said he has the same approach in terms of work ethic and maturity as Amari Cooper. Right. That's awesome to hear, especially since they're the same age. Right. Oh. Well, this is this is also, you know, people like to point to, you know, continuity at Alabama and, and or in other programs where people, you know, succeed uh, well, especially in the pros with, you know, it's all about continuity and, and getting your guys in there like this is. When when he got in there as a freshman, I think it was Lane Kiffin running the offense, and then mm-hmm. it was uh, Sarkeesian, and then this year it was uh, I, I don't even know who the hell was running the offense this year. Like right. this, there there's been some some turnover there in all three years that Calvin Ridley's been out there trying to catch passes and do his job, and he's he's never really wavered. Like you've seen a little bit of fluctuation in the overall numbers, but he's been solid every single year. Absolutely, yeah, I'm. I'm down to take <clears> – <throat> I probably will miss on this guy unless he falls towards the end of the first round. I'm probably not taking any wide receiver until that late first area, and then whichever of these top four or five guys fall, that's who I would be targeting. I'm, I'm going to probably hammer those running backs early in the first round. But, I mean, as far as ranking these guys go, I'm super comfortable having Ridley as my number one guy right now. Yeah, well, I'm going to – we'll save maybe the ranking for last thing we do as, as we go through here – 
But I, you know, putting I'm, it out I'm, there. Yeah, I'm no, down. for sure. I'm, I, I feel I'm, good about it. I'm kind of up in the air right now. I haven't made a, a a a hard list, and obviously we haven't. Christian Kirk is not in this uh, list of guys that we're going to do. But I did see, you know, Matt Harmon talking about the other day about how how hard it is. Like, and we were like a little worried about this receiver class, but then really these top four or five guys. It's kind of hard to separate these guys. It's yeah. hard to put them in an order. Like, I mean, some people will be like, oh, well, these guys are the top two guys. But then, you know, me and you have been exchanging things back and forth in the last two weeks. Like, man, these guys are kind of growing on me. This is yeah. tough to differentiate which guys I like the most. And, right. you know, as again, it's probably going to come down to a little bit more of a landing spot thing. Sure. And see how, you know. I, Absolutely. Right. These, I mean, landing spots going to be crucial. It always is. We're going to try if, not to say that a million times in this episode. Yeah, I mean, you definitely shouldn't be having, you know, your your rookie draft before the actual draft. Um, if you do. You are. <laughs> <laughs> you and you should probably Jay-Z. switch it up. Hit you with that, Jay. You should probably do your rookie draft after the real draft, but, I mean, like we like to get on here and put our opinions down before all that happens just for good measure. But just to sum all that up, man, this is a guy that typically when he has all these kind of character traits and and to go along with being super efficient as a route runner and very explosive and put God all that kind of... Least speed. You know, yeah, smart guy, does everything you want him to do, team kind of first. Succeeded against the best competition in the right. land. Th- these are all these are all fantastic things, which, you know, I can't really argue with you if you want to go on. I might have him as one as w- at one as well. All right. We're really getting somewhere here. Well, let's go ahead and take a quick break, gather our thoughts. We'll be back with uh, another rookie wide receiver breakdown for your pleasure. Pleasurable, 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 pleasurable. <laughs> <laughs> all right. We're back. Hit us up on Twitter if you want to join the discussion at the FF Dynasty. Let us know well, what's your fantasy to see. Um, <laughs> let's get back into these wide receivers. Yeah, let's We're, take it from a guy who the analytic community really struggles with, hates, hates, hates on because of the bad <laughs> combine and all that other stuff. If you have hate in your heart, let it out. To a guy who the metric community absolutely loves, and after the combine, they. <gasps> Certainly have as much of a hard on, if not a harder hard on, <laughs> a harder hard on for this guy afterwards. And you know, when somebody scores this well in the ninety seventh percentile or of everything, whatever the hell it is, you know, it's something that you definitely have to take notice to, especially when a guy well, who are we talking about here? DJ Moore. DJ if you haven't figured Moore. it out, we're talking about DJ Moore, which he prefers that you don't put the apo- the doesn't periods like the dots on the D and the J. Yeah, doesn't like the period. It's a DJ. Um. But he's he's a guy who who absolutely blew up the combine. So many blue numbers on and the, on the combine scores. So many blue numbers, which means top performer. Top performer. Um, and he's uh, and then when you get into the tape and the and what he did with Maryland and all that kind of stuff, he was you know, kind of their whole offense and and absolutely and absolutely college dominator is in the ninety seventh percentile. <laughs> Right, and as and we talked about Ridley, of you know how everybody was rolling coverage his way, everybody had to know that old DJ Moore was getting the ball, so he was seeing the toughest coverage on the field without a doubt. Sure, and then he's he's seeing the the second toughest opponents. His schedule is probably the second toughest out of schedule. a lot of these guys we're going to talk about. Right, as he's a, going to get in that Big Ten. He's in the Big Ten, solid. Uh, you know, is, he, he had Wisconsin, Michigan, Michigan State, Penn State. Uh, Minnesota, OSU, and then yeah. out of conference is a, a UCF team. Northwestern was pretty good this this year. Right, right. So and uh, a lot of those games, you know, he did work. I mean, he, he set a school record with eighty receptions. He did. He did do a lot of work. But let's take it back to game one. Yeah. And just go a little bit over how this season ended up, how it did with such piss poor quarterback play for old poor DJ Moore. Played with four different QBs. Right. So week. Week one, they go to Texas and beat up Texas with uh, Tyrell Pigram. I'm pretty sure that's how you pronounce his name, but I'm not 100% sure. sure it's not Tyrone Bigham. <laughs> so he goes out there, and when you watch the tape of that game, uh, the passes are concise. They're right where they want to be. It's the, the offense is moving great. Maryland goes on the road, wins the game. DJ Moore looks awesome. Everything looks super fluid. I was loving what what was going on there. So Maryland gets off to one of the better starts that they've had in in a while. I think beats a ranked Texas. Be, beats a ranked Texas in Texas, and then they, but they lose 
Pigram to an ACL injury here, mm-hmm. which is no stranger to the Maryland uh, franchise with quarterbacks. They've just had awful luck with quarterbacks for the last few years. But then freshman Kasim Hill comes in and he tears it up uh, in the Townsend game, which I mean, it's Townsend. it's Townsend, but he tears it up and looks similar to what the the first quarterback kind of game looks like. There's a lot. There's no indecision. It's decisive. He's getting the ball out quick to DJ Moore. DJ Moore looks super elite and, you know, Everything's going well for, for, for Maryland. And then early on in the next game, the UCF game, Hill tears his ACL, which is mm. another huge bummer. And, and the wheels kind of fall off of Maryland as a team. And, you know, DJ Moore, like you said, still school record with 80 receptions and just had awful quarterback play. Right. So that's it's pretty impressive. Right. It's it's very impressive. It was press- It's impressive to watch him play. I mean, he... He's he's another versatile guy. He lines up all over the field. They put him in the slot. He can go on the left or right side of the formation. He's got no fear. He'll go over the middle. He'll snatch that ball, take a big hit. I also think he's pretty good at avoiding a big hit. Right. He can diagnose it quickly. Solid, and, solid trait. Uh, you can't really track it, but I right. I like guys who are good at getting tackled. Right. Because some guys aren't good at getting tackled. It just looks awkward. Like Every time Keenan Allen gets tackled, I'm like I think there's holding a diff- my breath. I think there's a difference between being good or bad at getting tackled because i don't think that's a real thing but no, i think i think it's totally a real i think thing. it is a real thing to not get blo- like not take the big shots right and i think that's that could be you know something that onto something guys are better at than other guys sure maybe i still think you can be good at getting tackled but um i mean I, another thing i really love about this guy is that, that he crushes it near the end zone they threw him a lot of fades right. in the end zone and i mean a fade route in the end zone that's like the easiest way to get six points right well, Absolutely. I mean, I guess seven because we're all playing PPR, right? Who isn't? I mean, if you're not, you are <laughs> really getting some use out of this. Love, loving that new sound right yeah. there. Try to get a new sound bite every but no, week he, for you. He is. He's very aggressive in the red zone. He goes and gets it even even if it doesn't seem like it may be even a little bit out of bounds. There's multiple times where he's going and snatching it and still almost getting that toe right. in bounds near the red area, which right. is, is awesome. And the, the balls aren't as accurate, right, with these with these right. other quarterbacks that they with had to bowl and schlager or whatever right. the hell the fourth, schlager whatever the hell the four string quarterback's name yeah. was. So, but but that that's one of the negative things that I have about this guy is that you know you can see him visibly getting frustrated out there. You can see him sometimes taking the playoff but never near the red zone like he's right. ready to go and i think you know I'll, I'll come back with that of saying like they're playing decent teams they're getting blown out for the most part right and he's seeing a lot of coverage and he's not getting good balls thrown his way and he's probably open sometimes right. and the quarterback doesn't know what's going on and can't escape the rush or doesn't read the play right or all those kind of things so i you know it's easy to get frustrated in that you don't like to see it but i can understand it right yeah i mean this dude just He's the quick twitch athlete. Like that's he's quick, sure. he's got that quick twitch, and you see it in the combine numbers, and it shows up on the field. He's so explosive. He's a, he's a true threat to take it to the house from anywhere, right. At any time, you love that, and th- that's that can't be undervalued. Like right. he's he's so strong and powerful, and then you you couple that with the twitch quick kind of stuff, right? And kind of built like a running back. He's you know six, six foot two ten, right? Just 15 and at, bench press at, reps, which is pretty solid. Right. At one point, they were saying that you know possibly he was maybe two two twenty two twenty five during the season. There were there were reports out there that he was that big, just being a you know a big bodied kind of looking like a running back out there. Yeah. So I thought thought yeah. that was interesting, and that all leads to the, that all leads to him being great after the catch. That's right. Another awesome attribute. Um, they they threw him a lot of screens. He's he's so slippery, on the one hand. But he's also powerful. He's he's just so lethal after the catch. He uses his blocks well. He's got a good feel for navigating through traffic and using those blockers. It's it's just fun to watch because you know, like I said, he can take it to the house for if sure. You give him a little crease, absolutely. Um, and then he 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 returned kicks in 2016. He returned punts in 2017. So he's got that experience. That's probably going to help him get onto an NFL field. So I think I think this guy has a, yeah, a no, decent I, chance. It, it it's showing you some some good stuff in his rookie year. You got to like a strong, explosive guy who can get out there and d- return kicks and punts for a team, especially as a as a younger guy getting on the field. That's always a huge plus. Another huge plus of him getting on the field is his ability to win in versus press man coverage. Like he had great success, great success against I like this you. Dude, right, 
We talked about how he's got this strong upper body. Like, good luck jamming this dude at the line of scrimmage. Yeah. He's got that that quick twitchness combined with the start and stop explosive ability. It's just it's just impossible to get your hands on him. If you do, he can fight you off. If you don't get your hands on him, he can juke you any which way to get around right. you. He just he didn't have any trouble with the press man coverage, and that's something that's just another factor right. that's going to help him get onto the field. Absolutely, um, I I knew this was a this has always been and for for a while. Old Matt Kelly has been touting this guy as his as his guy and you know really sticking to that and then he blew the combine up so after that after that happened right. I, I went he's went got 97 percentile right. in every category that sometimes matters i wanted to uh go go on youtube and, and just listen to a couple of the clips of, of kind of what he was saying about him and i stumbled across a, a clip of 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 him and marcus mosher talking about you know how maybe he'll be handled at the next level and they were talking about maybe he would start off in the slot um, and then, you know, maybe as the as next year goes on and he learns and grows and develops, maybe move him outside and, and then be a little more versatile and able to move around. And I, I thought that was a, a really good point. I think this is a guy who uh, we'll get into it in a little bit, but the route running isn't my favorite with this guy. Yeah. But if you can put him in the slot and get the ball in his hands, as we, we mentioned, he's so strong and powerful and quick. Um I think that's a good way to get explosive plays out of him because he's kind of like a running back once he gets the ball in his hands. Right. Um, and I, I really like that that idea of and maybe you can take he, your shots with him too right. out of the slot. Exactly. You can still go up vertical with him and and he'll get open. Right. Um. So I, I kind of like that uh that idea or theory on on DJ Moore and I, and I know that's his boy and it has been so good for him. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you mentioned it. The route running. You know, it's it, it wasn't the best. Yeah. There's definitely a decent list of negatives with this guy. Um, you know, route running being at the top of that. It seemed like there were rounded angles kind of at the top of the route. He didn't always he didn't always take the most precise cut. It seemed like he was cutting corners almost, but not like not in a good way. Right. Um he just sometimes it's ridiculous how he looks with his moves and his change of directions. Um, but maybe he relies a little bit too much on that athleticism. Sure. If he if he'd hone in the route running and use that quick twitch change of direction, you know, ability that he has with him, he'd be unstoppable. But he yeah. just hasn't quite put it all I together. I think that's kind of where you're hoping that it will it will head. But I that's where I'm, the potential is right. here. And then you you couple that with the athletic ability and right. it's, it's off the charts. You know, again, I I'm I not, get why he's so high on people's boards sure. because of this the potential in the profile. Right, that and has. that and that going back to the slot thing and and that this is kind of why I don't disagree why he's one of the upper end guys if not the the top guy. I don't know if he's my top guy or not, but I think ah, he, he is a guy especially if if a team did pick him up and maybe throw him in the slot that he could be a guy and come out there and immediately produce for your fantasy team and give you good points and and like we've said multiple times he can take it to the house. You just have to get the ball in his hands, you know, to right. go to the house at any point and I think coming from the slot is the best chance uh, year one for him to get his legs under him and and learn and develop and all that kind of stuff. But yeah, I definitely don't hate that idea um, at all. Another thing, another negative here is that he's he's dealt with some some drops, which a lot of these guys have the occasional laughs sure. and 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 have their drops. But I definitely don't, I don't think love any him. of these guys are Larry Fitzgerald only no. logging like one college drop. That's true. Nobody's nobody's old Fitzy. Um, but I I don't. I don't love this dude in the in the contested catch arena. Sometimes he doesn't even go up and make a play on the ball. Now, I understand that he dealt with this bad quarterback play and then they were getting blown out in a fair amount of games, but you know, you got to still put it out. You got to you got to put that effort forth the whole time and he and sometimes he's just taking plays off and like you, you got to go up and try to catch the ball. If I see you not even trying, it's like, yeah. man, come on, man. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't, I don't love that either. But I, what I will go back to what we kind of touched on earlier about how you know, just getting beat up, right? Tough game, bad quarterback, I all that it. kind of stuff. I, but you do see sometimes where he's awesome in the contested catch arena. So yeah, he can definitely make a wild play. I mean, he's an electric guy that, that, that can take it to the house from anywhere. He's got tons of potential. He's got a great smile. Right. He looks like a star. He looks like he can step into that role and handle that. From a from a you know being a star wide receiver right. in the NFL, um, I I don't I don't think he's going to be on any of my teams. I think that he's going to go too high in a rookie draft for me. Right for my I think he's going to go probably top six, and I, I don't think I'm going to take any wide receivers that high. I would probably pass on him that high and then try and take 
some of these other wide receivers we're going to talk about a little bit later. And towards the second round, you know, your Anthony Millers, the Gallops, I think yeah. I'd rather take the stab on the running back that high. Um, I doubt he's going to fall to the back end of a first-round right. draft. So I don't see him being on my team. Well, what you're, what you're drafting more for is, again, I think you can get maybe some early stuff out of him off the rip um, and, and some some year one uh, points for your team. But and then, if he does but show then you're anything. Drafting, but then you're drafting that potential just right. well, he's ceiling got the of name ridiculousness. He's, sure. His and, and name that. is worth drafting alone. Like You know that he's probably not going to lose too much value even if he doesn't do anything year one right. because of his profile and how everybody right. loves him and the hype. But if he does happen to f- show you something – then, then that uh, that value is just going to even go up even further. So right. maybe it's not a bad swing to take because it's his name has safeness written on it. Right, and and with if, with the display that he put up in the, uh, the combine. combine and that kind of stuff, and then the production on the field where you know he's the whole team basically. Right, going against good defense with a back sure. quarterback. You got to love the the potential and and you know the the ceiling is is pretty limitless on this guy right now and i think that's what intrigues a lot of people to take him as as the one overall right yeah and i can't you know i can't argue too, too as much the with re- you. one receiver overall right yeah obviously yeah um all right well that'll uh, that'll put a bow on dj Moore. let's go ahead and take another break and we'll be back with more married to the game welcome back everyone you're listening to the ff dynasty's married to the game podcast hit us up on twitter if you'd like to join in on the discussion at the ff dynasty we're going to keep going with our rookie wide receiver breakdowns. We're going to get into a guy who's one of my favorite players to watch, and he was kind of at the top of my board for a while watching him play because he's so explosive down the field. We're going to get into a little James Washington. Yeah, what let's you, do it. What do, you, what do you got on little James over there? Oh, I got I got all sorts of stuff. I How mean, much time you got? Right. <laughs> but, I mean, this was a guy who – did work at the Senior Bowl. Yeah, drew a lot of praise for his release moves and right. was just tearing up practice, and he's all awesome, and then the combine And the comes. combine strikes, so not good at football anymore. Can't be good if you're not fast and jump No way. He ran, a, he, he ran a five or a four, four five, five, four. Four. Like, come on, man. No so way. No what way I, good. What I saw on tape doesn't matter anymore now. Lies, lies. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I didn't. I was a little surprised to see that, that that's – that 40 because i thought it was going to be a little faster than that but like my the thought that popped into my head was the same thing that um who's the nfl network guy the the not mike mayock yeah mike mayock was like he took the words right out of my mouth and he's like well he plays a lot faster than that right and i was like exactly and i mean there's plenty of guys who run these times who are clearly faster on the field when there's competition in front of him right and it actually matters that you can run right. past this guy there's plenty of fast guys who don't know what to do and how to get past this defender and how to track the ball and how to catch the ball and do all those kind of things. His on the field speed is just fine. Right. Well, when you can stack a defender, you don't need to be fast because you can control <laughs> how fast the defender's running. You just got to get by him. Yeah. Which he does at will almost. Right. Well, I think, you know, you hear a lot of the talk about maybe some of the negative of James Washington is about maybe just being kind of a vertical threat and not a huge route tree and kind of all that stuff um i guess what i would say is just to talk about the offense real quick is the offense is pretty simple and going back to the roots of kind of where this uh spread that attacks vertically is is what they called it um it was an offense drawn up by a former quarterback from uh cal penn mike urich uh he's a former head coach at shippensburg university he drew up this offense um while at shippensburg terrible program took it over uh, he righted the ship over there and then has gradually worked he, his way. He righted the ship in yeah, Shippensburg. No, no pun intended. <laughs> um, but he's worked his way to Stillwater. Um, and now he's one of like, you know, the higher, the, the, the hotter names in the, you know, offensive coaching kind of circuit. I think they have uh, the West Virginia coach used to be at Oklahoma State and good coaching genes. Yeah, they got they got a solid tree over there. They, they find good up and coming guys and then, you know, they eventually lose them. But it's a it's like a good uh, back in the good day. operation over there. Um, but so going back to what he was doing at Shippensburg, you, I read an interview from a former quarterback at Shippensburg who was saying like once he took over this offense, he got out there, he showed them exactly how he wanted to ru- how how he wanted it run, and it was so simple. And they he took a caveman could right. Do he it. took <laughs> he took all the kind of guesswork out, showed them boys exactly how to do it. Wide receivers, running back, offensive linemen, all that, and then 
you know, he went on to say how everybody on Shippensburg just wanted to get out there and play because in this offense, everybody was kind of touching the ball. And that's kind of what goes on at, uh, at Oklahoma here. Like James Washington role is that field stretching vertical role. He can do other things, but this is what he's asked to do in this offense. Right. And he absolutely crushes it. He has what they call vertical push. Right. And he's, he averages like over 20 uh, yards of catch yards for the last three for, years. Right. And, there's a, well, one of those years is like 19.6. There's plenty of other talent there at, at the running back position. You have Justice Hill. They have Marcel Atman, who also averaged around like 19 yards a catch, I believe. They have a slot receiver in Stoner. Stoner. And I, the other guy's name is eluding me right now. But they have a bunch of good receivers, and they all do different things. Yeah. So it's it's an offense with they everyone has a James role. Washington right. They didn't do everything. That was his role. He there's, did it, and he crushed it. What right. more do you want from him? Right. There's plenty of catches being had by everyone here in this offense. Right. Other people eating. He, it, it wasn't just him. He didn't have to do everything. Right, and he still ate. He still did his thing. Eight over over a thousand yards for three years in a row. Right, and th- so this is a, just a guy who, who is probably the best part of his game is like just the the greatness and of a ball tracker that he is that goes Man. hand in hand with being a good vertical threat, which James Washington is one of the best. He's um, a center fielder, man. Right. When the ball's in the air, it's his ball. And he's always behind the defender. He's always behind the defender. And, you know, they get tired of it, so they start cheating, and he plays through contact like a champion. Sure. Um, you you want to hold him. He's got you. You hand check him. He's going to beat you with that. He's a he's a martial artist. He studied right. martial arts, so his handwork is phenomenal. He's an artist of the martials. Yeah. So this this guy's kind of got everything you want in a vertical receiver. Like you can see those eye, like the eyes w- when he's tracking a ball on a vertical route is just f- tremendous. Yeah, it's Sammy Watkins like. It's it's awesome. He's got those super late hands. He doesn't bring them up. He doesn't tip off the defender. Right. They're last minute hands. These and are all good little parts and pieces and nuances of this guy's game that probably just get taken for granted because how good he is. Right. Not to mention the almost 33-inch length arms. Extremely long arms for how big he is. He can or touch. How, for how small. He's not small, but right. for his size, I guess, is where I was going with that. Right. So he's uh, 5'11", 213. He's four inches shorter than Cortland Sutton, and they have like About the, same the same arms. arm length. Right. He can, he can scrape the blades of grass for sure. He knows Absolutely. What, what temperature that turf is. When he's leaning over in that stance, that also plays into just being that great down the field receiver. He just comes up with so many balls you don't think he's going to come up with. Right. And whether he has to, you know, adjust his his route when the ball's in the air, he can fade towards the sideline. He can cut it in like he, he can catch it from anywhere. And he's he's not necessarily going up in the air and making a play, but right. he's just he's getting behind the defender and coming up. It's like Marvin Jones, like you know, he's, right. he's going to the ground and securing the catch. And just coming up with these catches, like how did how did he just get that? And that's like a fifty yard play. Like he can make your day in one play for sure. And and again, another he he knows how to work his defender. Like he'll he doesn't tip his hand to kind of what exactly he's doing. He'll do it in a multitude of different ways to to not you know get the guy in any sort of a pattern of of what he's doing. He'll kind of run straight at the guy and eat up that kind of cushion that you have to give him, and then he'll take you outside. Right. So, that that on his vertical route like yeah. eat up that cushion turn you a little bit and get you outside and get get the defender's hips off of uh off balance off kilter i would mm, say like solid gets gets him turned around enough to to take advantage of of uh his lethal vertical speed even though it didn't show up on uh on the combine on the combine and then well he's got the he's got good hands too at the top of the route he's pretty good and subtle at like pushing off and cheating right to give himself a little bit of that separation like it didn't he didn't get caught with it like we'll talk about this was Cortland Sutton he got called for a fair amount of offensive pass interferences like James Washington was a little more subtle but you got to be able to cheat it's the martial arts bro right and then to go along with that with that vertical prowess that he has, that that hitch or the curl or comeback or whatever you want to call it, is is absolutely lethal. Oh, sure. You have to respect him. You have to give him the cushion and just try not to get burned out there. He'll just he'll break you down real quick for for a quick twelve yards without a problem. Um, yeah, like the, he gets knocked for the route running a little bit because it wasn't a, a super diverse route tree like we kind of talked right, about. But that but wasn't kinda, his that, role, right? Um, but I, I mean, you see the occasional uh, deep slant you see some screen passes a seven yard out here and there the comeback route as you just mentioned but mostly just go down the field bubba 
because that's what you're good at right. and that's what's going to and that's what we need you to do. He was pretty much always on the right side of the formation. He didn't really move around too too much. Um the same thing could be said for Juju Smith Schuster. That didn't, you know, turn it out too bad for him. Play um, at the next level. But you did see him go into the slot a little bit, um which I think is maybe something that he could continue to right. work. Well, when, when that's kind of another discussion that people have with him is, you know, Maybe he should he should move to the slot, and then other people will argue, well, that's not really his skill set. Like, I, I I can't see how you can say this isn't his skill set. Like, yeah, I, I mean, I feel he definitely like he's not afraid to go over the middle, right? When and when you did see him go into the slot and and make those moves, he he was a he was a strong hands catcher and great run after the catch. This is a guy who won time after time with the boundary working against him. If you could teach this guy to work out of the slot where he could go anywhere on the field and still take you vertically, like. I think that would be absolutely ridiculous. And I, I don't think he should go in there full time. I don't think he should be a, a just a straight up slot receiver. I think that would be stupid. Mm -hmm. I think he's great on the outside. He can obviously win on the outside. But I think it's something that you could mix in there. You can't tell me a guy with his kind of talent can't be taught to run routes out of the slot. And it, just like we said, I've said it again, you know, he, he can run this like he, I saw him have success running some some shorter routes Absolutely. inside going over the middle, catching the ball and, and keeping it moving with his hands, catching the ball and keeping it moving uh, through the middle of the field. Yeah, I mean, he, he he gets knocked a little bit for those hands. I think that he, you know, that's just going to happen from time to time. These guys are going to come up with some drops, but then he he makes some ridiculous wild plays and he, he, he will make a tough contested catch. He'll make a catch over the middle. And, right. not, and not be phased by by you know the safety coming to make that hit. Um, you mentioned a little bit his after the catch ability. Uh, he was knocked by our buddy Lance Zerloin for having a uh, one of his weaknesses was that he had a body type like a running back, which I uh, was it's something about his hips not being able to be you know loose enough or something. Right. And which I don't I don't know that you necessarily need the the loosest of hips when you're crushing downfield plays and right. the guys well, have to that, respect your and that would be a little bit of a knock of, of why maybe you know that doesn't fit his skill set of moving into the slot because you need to be able to sink those hips to to change direction a little quicker um but i to, think but to me this whole the body type of this running back that's not necessarily i don't find that as a knock like i think it helped him with his after the catch ability i mean they were just trying to get the ball in his hands as much as they could you see him take some end rounds and you see him you right. know they're just trying to get the ball in his hand and he's he's aggressive he can lower his shoulder and get you a couple extra yards he's, he can sure. diagnose when the when the yak's about to be over with and and as much like dj Moore in that aspect of like he's 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 built bigger and he's powerful and absolutely I, I like that like yeah He's one of my favorite players to watch. I really, I really enjoy this kid, and I, and I hope that he gets disrespected so that I can have a chance at getting him later in a draft. I, I don't know if he, depending on when your draft is and where he gets drafted, and if I you mean, get to see him in the preseason and he shows look, I you think, that. I think this guy could could make a career playing outside and just running vertical routes if 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 you know right. if that's what it was. But I think he just could takes be one a lot. Play. I think he can be a lot more than that. I think he's a much better athlete and more versatile than that. I do believe that he can move. I think he sh can and should be moved around in the formation. He should come out of the slot. Like he should come out of left and right sides. Like he, I feel like he can do everything and, and still be a vertical attacker for your team. Right. Yeah. I mean, to sum up my final thoughts, like this dude is just so explosive and he's just the best deep ball tracker that I've seen in a while. And he just always comes up with these big plays downfield and he can make your play he can make your day in one play, and I love that ability. And then he's got the potential to to grow that even more and, and work some of the more intermediate and short stuff. And I know I feel good about his ability to work at something and improve because, you know, let's take it to the, the interview. Like sure. We don't miss a good interview. There's an awesome little uh, cut-up that the uh, University of Oklahoma State did to uh, – they took out they, – they went out fishing with him because he's a big fisherman. Right. Um, and and the, the lady there was like, just kind of interviewing him there. They're sitting on the boat fishing, and he was just talking about, you know, patience and hard work. That's really all he wanted to talk about, which you got to have patience if you're fishing. Right. I can't do it. Yeah. I, <laughs> you got to be crushing beers. Yeah. I'll, to go I'll fishing. If you guys want to fish, give me some shade and I'll drink some beer. I'm right. Good. Exactly. Um, but, you know, he was talking about how. A lot of guys they give up too early. You know they expect to be as good as Des Bryant in a week, and he's like, it didn't. Des Bryant didn't become Des Bryant in a week. Right. Des Bryant became himself because he worked freaking hard every day of his life to become somebody good. And like, 
Um, he he he's, he gets a lot of that comparison to Des Bryant because, you know, he's at Oklahoma State and he has that downfield ability. But you know, he he doesn't he's not trying to become Des Bryant. He 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 respects Des Bryant's game and molds himself a little bit like that. But you know, he's just he's basically said if you if you put in hard work and you're patient, your time will come. And if you ask me, this kid's time is coming. Right. And and you're gonna know and see that just because he ran a slower forty doesn't mean jack shit. Right. He he ran a slow forty, but so all that tape was just a was just a doesn't lie. Doesn't mean like, anything. I mean, come on, man. Get the fuck out of here. Right. Ooh, heavy with the f bomb right there. Didn't yeah. like it. Nah. No, nah, I mean it's, it's it is true though. I mean, time after time, just winning on the vertical route, like so. Was he not fast enough to win on the vertical route? Did he just win on the vertical route because his technique was just so ridiculous that he, like... Well, no, sign I mean, me up for that, yeah, too, then. Te- I mean, right. shit. Well, well, yeah, his technique was awesome, but he's also pretty fast. Right. When Put you line him up against on, him, right. It's 213-pound dude. Good luck. Right. Good yeah. luck. No, Who's about to karate fight you? <laughs> I definitely Or am. take you fishing. Like, again, this is... Feed this you is, for a lifetime This here. is why this conversation with these kind of top... Top end four or five guys here, I think for us is, is kind of getting a little tougher than we originally thought it would be. Right. Another no, one last little note about this guy. You know, I love it when they hand the ball off to the ref and they act like they've been in the end zone before. Yeah. I like that. That's a good sign of things wants, to come. Wants to celebrate with his team because yeah. he knows it took the team effort to get him down there. Right. And he knows he's going to score another touchdown so he doesn't have to act like an ass. Really like that. But you could already know that based off of a lot of other things that this dude is, 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 is down to put in that hard work. And he's got some God-given ability. Maybe it didn't show up in blue numbers on your combine results, but whatever. Yeah, no, I mean, look at look at Antonio Brown's draft uh, player profile. Right. It's not impressive. No, look at I Jerry mean, Rice's. Like, just be like, I just it's just well, drains mean, when, the shit out. When of When you me. get back to the DJ Moore thing, like obviously you like the the thing that you like about all those blue numbers on there, and that he showed some decent stuff on the field. Is that what the what the potential ceiling could be? I saw what James Washington can do on the field. Right. I didn't need a test to tell me anything. I'm, right. I'm good. I know what he can do. Right. You don't have to tell me shit about what he can do on the field. I know what he can do on the field. He can average 20 yards a catch and be for three years and be filthy right. and, and mean. And, and just he wants it more than you do. He's going to win on that vertical route. He's not going to be denied. You may yep. be faster than him in underwear, on, but he's going to be just as fast and just enough, just fast enough to beat you on that vertical route. Yeah, and then let me get them. Let me get that vertical downfield receiver, man. Right, and let I, me get that dude. And I do think he can do much more than that. Just again, back to the Oklahoma State thing. That's not what he was. He, well, he was asked to play the role, and he crushed it. But right. he was asked to do other things. He wasn't terrible at it. I think this is a hardworking guy, a smart guy, a humble guy. Boom. Get in there, move him around. I think I think James Washington can do anything you ask him to do. Awesome. Let's uh let's let's call that a wrap. Let's go ahead and take another break. Let's get on to Cortland Sutton. And we'll be back with some Cortland. Cortland. Cortland, Cortland get out the yard, Cortland. Cortland, bring the Brickershaw over here, Cortland. <laughs> <laughs> we think Cortland is like a, a British name. I don't know. We're, we're we're dumb here. Anyway, <laughs> you can you can hit us up on Twitter and tell us so at the FF Dynasty. All right, we'll be back with more Married to the Game. Let's keep this thing rolling. Uh we're gonna we're gonna we're going to go with Cortland Sutton on this go around here. Cortland. He was a guy who I really wasn't expecting to really like because I felt like there was a fair amount of hate on him. You, you know? bought into all the hate. I did. Then there was a lot of, you know, coming out of, in 17, he was probably, you know, if he would have came out, everyone was really loving him and probably would have been maybe the top touted prospect. And then maybe the third wasn't wasn't super. uh wasn't, wasn't super, feeling it. Wanted right. to come back. Wanted to come back and then wasn't super loved over the season really and in, into the off season here. But then, but then. The combine. Goes to the combine. And all of a sudden, everything's changed. Then he puts himself back. Time to get into back the, on the Cortland train. Puts him back in the hierarchy of. Yeah. Uh, of the upper echelon wide receivers, receivers in this here. class. Uh, has a nice, nice three cone. Dom- <sighs> Solid three cone dominates drill. there. Has a nice twenty shuttle and a and a nice sixty shuttle. Oh my god! Yeah. <laughs> and a decent uh, a High decent adjusted speed score. A decent, is pretty uh, good. Forty for for how large he is. He's your kind of prototype prototype uh, receiver here at six three two eighteen. Solid size. So you gotta love all that kind of stuff. And and of course, I mean, he did he did w- work on the agility stuff at the combine. So that means he's good. Good again. Yeah, I was a little surprised to see that. Three cone drill. 
just because, you know, you see him, we'll get into some of the negatives of, of his game. You see him take some plays off here and there. He doesn't always use that three-cone drill to uh, to fruition, but, I mean, he's got it, and, and you definitely do see it show up a fair amount. There's a lot of a wow plays, a lot of big plays there in that SMU offense. This, this cat definitely has a knack for the end zone. I think that he can come in and be a red zone threat right off the rip. For sure. that That's definitely something that, you know, I'm uh, – I'm intrigued. definitely intrigued by Cortland Sutton, and you got to be especially. I mean, obviously, you got the big frame, so that's immediately what you go to. Right. This, is, this could be a guy that you put on your team and immediately comes in um, and, at, and has an impact. And has an impact, at least touchdown wise. I mean, when you when you look back at what happened with Cortland Sutton, there is so much up and down play from from the quarterback position that every game there's two or three plays that you that big plays that you miss right. from Cortland Sutton because of a bad throw from the quarterback or you know, whatever, but it was, it was all, the quarterback play was, was pretty poor. Not, I mean, not DJ Matt, DJ more poor, right. But I mean, it's just so erratic, um, and left a lot of big stuff out on the field. So I think maybe once you get to the next level and you have a little bit more accurate of a quarterback and a little, you know, tighter system of what they want Cortland Sutton to do, I think you could immediately see an immediate impact from a guy like Cortland Sutton, which is why I, I, uh, was was pretty drawn to him kind of off the rip uh, when, when I got into the tape. I, I didn't think I was going to be, but but I was. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you. I, I actually, I've had a bit of a roller coaster ride with Cortland because I've, I really liked him a lot from what I saw last year. He was actually one of the first guys I looked into last year before I was looking into guys before they had declared, which is kind of a waste of time. You need to make sure they're going pro before right. you waste the time on them. But, so I, he came into this year and I was – had him near the top of my board, and then like you, I kind of bought into all the negativity, and 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 then you you get into some of the negative things that he's knocked for, and and you get a little bit discouraged. But then you know you go back and, and you take everything into consideration. You rewatch the tape and you look at everything with with an open mind, and then you start to I started to turn again, and now I feel like I can put him back up there. It wasn't necessarily the combine numbers that that did that for me. But it's just it's just the process of how you go about seeing these guys. You don't always see it correctly the first time. You I got to go back and watch things multiple times to really get a handle on it. Right. And so, but I mean, this cat has a fair amount of the knocks. Um, one of them being that he didn't show up against good competition. Right. Well, yeah. When when after I get done with watching uh, all the tape and gathering all the information that I have and thinking I have a pretty good grasp on the guy, I like to go see what other you know, people who do this for a living scout wise have to say about this guy and, and, and read up on it. And in the NFL draft profile thing, which is the first one I go to just to see. And it's usually Old like Lance. kind of a, kind of a joke. Cause it's, it's fancy words, right? And it's a bunch of ridiculousness uh, for the most part. And it's a lot of times it's contradicting of, right. of what he has in the weaknesses versus strengths. So, and he has, he has that he didn't really show up against better competition in, in, not a lot of solid competition in, no, there, there for isn't. SMU. And uh, in 17, against, he, he specifically points to TCU and UCF. But in the TCU game, yeah, he, he has one catch for zero yards. But you don't want to get too caught up in speculation. Uh, but there was, there was a lot of plays left on the field for Cortland in that game. Um, early on in the TCU game, he has favorable coverage in the red zone. And uh, the quarterback puts it pretty he's he runs into the middle of the red zone quarterback puts it pretty high on him and he can't even really make a play on the ball um so he misses on there it could have easily won the jump ball had good position on the defender and then uh, just a that that's kind of like uh, it could have went either way there and then there is just one where he just absolutely dominates his man and it's 22 to 35 or something at the time in the third quarter and he is wide open from 33 yards out and the quarterback just overthrows him by like 10 yards it would yeah. have been an easy touchdown and maybe the tide turns in that game and maybe then Cortland even has a couple of more grabs after that so it's just you know again I don't want to get too caught up in speculation but he comes out and says he basically got dominated by TCU this but when two years ago he beat TCU up two years ago he absolutely crushed south florida um so i mean i i, I would kind of disagree with there and there there was again going back to the erratic quarterback play and misplays oh uh, i absolutely agree 
I don't. Uh, I'm not gonna knock him for for a couple of games. And I mean, I know what you're talking about. He had that wide open touchdown, just ten yards overthrown. What he's supposed to it's do? Awful ball. Right. And then you, you make that play, and then you got a different. Uh, you got a ball game on your hand, and maybe momentum shifts. Right. So. And then you can't j- make that a bullet point in your negativity of your write up. You know, right. if, you, if, if there's a touchdown thrown in there. Um, let's see. What else does he get knocked for? Is it's the route running? Um, sure. Or lack thereof. It seems like they. They throw the ball deep every single play. Right, and I mean, you get you get in a hitch and a and a dig and a, and a crosser here occasionally right. from him, but you do see a the lot huge. of you do see a lot of deep shots from him. And I won't. The route running definitely isn't the greatest, and he can seem lackadaisical at times. Um, Crushes that back shoulder fade though. Sure, and that's what you want to see out of a guy like that. Um, but they definitely say, has room to grow at the next level for sure. I I would agree. Um, they knock him, say you know he can drift sometimes at the top of his routes or or light on his cuts, and like to me that has to be an effort thing like you said look lackadaisical because i mean he looks sometimes he looks really great and like right. you have a three cone drill it's a blue number 6.57 seconds you cutting shouldn't be an issue when you're that agile so if if you see him taking if you see it not working out i think it's i think it's the frustration thing creeping in it's the lackadaisical well i mean yeah and i mean I would you could develop a little bit better technique and a little bit more in depth route running and route tree and all that kind of stuff. But you know, there's also you go back to the erratic quarterback play of you. You know, maybe you're not super thrilled about what's going on in every game, and then again, maybe you're not being too challenged, and maybe you know the ball's not coming to you, or maybe you're not giving it your best effort on this route just because the co- level of competition that you're playing, you're kind of taking it for granted and just right. kind of coasting through some stuff. Right. No excuses, just kind of. Yeah, I mean, no excuses. Like sometimes you see him come back hard to a ball, and sometimes you don't. It's right. like when whenever he chooses to do it, it looks awesome. Like right, he bails his quarterback out, but when he doesn't feel like doing it, it doesn't, you know. And then he doesn't come back to the ball, gets deflected right. or, or intercepted, and then you're like, man, come on, dude. But I mean, he definitely does some good things. It's a solid head fake. You know, he talked about it with uh, Calvin Ridley to lead this thing off about his eyes going back to the quarterback to try right. and just create a little bit of hesitation on the defender's part and you get that guy guessing even just for a second and then you can take advantage of that in another direction you see him you see him doing that you see him exploit that kind of thing um but uh you know he gets knocked for his hands for sure um he's got some you, you see some bobbling you see some drops a little bit more so i would say than than these other guys we're talking about um matt waldman Rip this guy apart for his hand tendencies. Right. Um, I watched basically him. more like the hand placement when the ball's thrown right. to you. You want to see a tight diamond basically when it right. comes out, you so catch that you the catch front the front of, front of the ball. Right, and so he was he was knocking him because he wouldn't always get his arms extended fully from his body, and when he did. A lot of times they were too far apart. Man, on one of those on one of those things, he's like, "Oh, he didn't get his arms extended fully from the body." It's like the the throw is like. Eight feet over his head. Like, put the ball in his chest. Yeah. It's easier said than done, though, I guess. Yeah. Well, I mean, I'm just, uh, I'm not, yes, he should, he should extend a little better, but I mean, he's probably frustrated with, uh, that's, we talked about it with some of these other guys, and it's not an excuse, but. It's a correctable issue, though. Right. I believe so. Yeah. And this dude, I mean, this dude has the sideline, he can work a sideline pretty good. He's got the toe drag ability, um, but. If that ball's juggling, you can't have it moving at all. There's a right. lot of times where he's making that play against the sideline and the ball moves a little bit. That's not going to be a catch right. in the NFL. I'm talking more about kind of the hand clapping of, of not right. having your hands in position to catch the front of the ball, and you're more relying on when the ball gets close. Basically, when you throw it, his hands are too far apart, and then when it gets close to him, he's trying to clamp down on the ball. He claps at it. Right, and it doesn't always work out for him, which, again, is a technique thing, and I think it's very fixable. And, again, I think he catches – a whole bunch of really tough catches. It's like, fair, yeah. I'm, I'm with you. I'm not that upset about it. Another hands uh, issue that he has is, is sometimes he's he's too too push offy at the top of a route. You see him, you see him grab, right. and you see him push and extend. And I and I know he's big, and he's probably been touched and 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 wrestled with all game. And you can get frustrated, and and you and I'm with you. You got to be able to cheat, but this dude right. just seemed to be cheating way well, too much, and he got called for it. You can't, lot. you can't, especially when you're a bigger guy like that. You can't get caught extending the arm with fully like you it has to be a little a little lower you can't get your hand up too high and when you see that full arm extension especially with a guy like Sutton who's that big you're going to get flagged for it you saw it with Mike Evans this year well a bigger bodied receiver 
kind of it's it's easier to pinpoint those kind of things, especially on a bigger guy. And he definitely got called for some of them. Some of them were just like out of pure frustration, but some of them were were just bad cheating on his part. Right, got to be a good cheater. Right, can't be a bad cheater. I mean, you got to. Yeah. <laughs> um, he's got a strong upper body though, man. He's six three and put up eighteen bench press reps. That's he a, does. a solid number. He's he's good. He can fight off defensive backs. He can hand fight you at the line of scrimmage right. or late in the so route. So in that in that aspect of thing, the hands are good. Right on the get, getting off of right jams. You're allowed and, to cheat right hand, there because that, that and contact's all that stuff, allowed. Yeah. Wipe um, it off. Wipe it off. But uh, you know, and, and and then the contact doesn't really bother him when he's running his routes and he gets you know hip checked or, or ran into a little bit. It doesn't doesn't get doesn't knocked knock off, off his off. line. Right. 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 And and to go kind of along with all that, I think he's he's a pretty solid blocker. He's very willing and oh, able, sure. and will finish. Will he'll finish. finish a, he'll play through the whistle, right. and he's a huge dude. So he doesn't, you know, when you're that big, you're already a blocking specimen. When you're sure. that, when you're that big of a body, this dude, uh, he's he's quick off the line of scrimmage, especially when he wants to be. And he played all over the field, like including yeah. the slot, right? Which is you love to see the versatility there. Um, my. My one of my personal favorite things from him was I love the middle of the field work from him when you did see it um, on crossing routes and kind of the digs, uh, all that kind of stuff. Uh, I thought it really showcased what he could be. You know, he's kind of got that big body he can go down the field um, and, and you know that you can get the big bodied vertical plays from him. But what you saw in the middle of the field from him really excited me. I thought there was especially when he got a ball that he could catch in stride and keep moving. I, I, that's that's what I was really impressed with Cortland Sutton with. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, and he's 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 pretty solid after the catch. I know that we'll get into that a little bit here. That was a, that was kind of one of those knocks that you read about right. him, right? Yeah. So the, again, in, in in one of the knocks about him was that he quote unquote won't scare defenders with the run after the catch ability, and this kind of goes hand in hand with that kind of middle of the field work plus other things. But I saw him in the middle of the field a good bit of times, grab balls and. He was kind of cutting cutting defenders up a little sure. bit. There's plenty of times, and it's not like some he's not breaking down and doing all this crazy movement, but it's 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 nice, subtle, it's subtle. clean movements. And but he's made dudes look stupid, right? Especially with that big frame. And then he has the big frame, so he it's hard to bring it. He's not soft, right? It's not easy to bring this big frame down. So all I kind of like the run. He's not obviously not going to scare anybody because he's lightning fast, but like he's a tough guy to bring down, and he will make you look stupid if you don't come correct. I'm with you, man. He's got that like you, that solid subtle little body fake where he's just he just gives you a little fake but it doesn't take him any effort it right. doesn't he doesn't have to gear down he doesn't have to slow down he doesn't Shifts have to lose hips, momentum keeps stride, right get and, skinny and that's just enough to get the defender just right. a little bit off balance and then he's got solid speed and you know right. he just he just keeps it moving and like you said he's a physical dude he plays super physical. There's not a ton of yards after the catch to to see. He didn't have that many opportunities. Right. A lot They're of the mostly times, just sending him down the field. Or when he was going in the middle of the field or running that kind of that that long that that deeper dig, like it was the ball was poorly thrown and he had to make an adjustment to go catch the ball and there mm -hmm. wasn't a lot of opportunity for him to run after the play, which right. I think he does do a decent job of adjusting to some poorly thrown balls and you see some really good snags and sometimes you see an effort issue, but I, I think that's just, I think it's a very correctable thing. And when you get to the next level and you have coaches on you and they're coaching your technique and you have maybe a little bit more of an accurate quarterback and you know, all that kind of stuff, I think yeah. you'll, you'll see him possibly clean all that kind of stuff up. Sure. And I definitely don't think that, that there's no ability to have the yak. I don't know why, you know, just because he didn't have a lot of it, doesn't mean that he's bad at right. it. You know, he's he's really physical. He's got a mean stiff arm, and he'll lower his shoulder. You know, he'll get a couple extra yards. Sure. It's a similar trait to that we've talked about, brought up several times tonight. But he's he's right there with these dudes. Um, Roto World had him charted with forcing twenty six missed tackles over the past two years. So it's not a crazy number, but it's it's a solid but for number. his for his size and 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 whatnot. I think that's a that's a good uh, that's a solid number. Yeah. One anomaly, he had a medical red shirt freshman year, so he didn't. He played like a couple games, and there's some information you can find out about those games he played. But I couldn't find what it was that he had to have a, a, a fresh a, a red shirt. It was a medical red shirt year. Right. Um, couldn't find out what that was, but you know he didn't really deal with any injuries going forward. He seems like a pretty healthy dude, so that's that's good to see. 
Um, and then we'll get into a, a little bit, like <laughs> I read this thing about, you know, they just asked him questions and stuff. He said he was all excited about Stranger Things too. He gave, he definitely didn't didn't shut that down. You you're all you're, you weren't on the Stranger Things too. No, I'm good. The now. cat's out of the bag. I know what's going on now. You got to watch it, man. I don't need to watch the second one. You just get to end, find out more about first, eleven. And first then there's one, like a twelve. Yeah, then then there's a seven and a six. <laughs> Odds are good, evens are bad. <laughs> you know, I'm I'm good. I, the cat's out of the bag. I knew I I know what's going on now. I I don't need it. Just end it with one season and. Go create a different show. Yeah. No, nah, I'm no, nah, I liked it, man. It was good. Screw you. You gotta give it a chance. I'm good. Oh, cat's out of the Thanks. bag. Cat's out of the bag. Yeah. Anyway, that has nothing to do with anything. <laughs> I just thought it was it was relevant because you're all a hater of Stranger Things yeah, I'm, too. I'm good. No no one last note here on Cortland Sutton. He wasn't even recruited as a wide receiver. Yeah. Isn't that crazy? He came, came out of high school as a defensive as a player. Freaking safety. Sure. And the the old coach, uh, June Jones, was like, hmm, maybe you should play wide receiver. Yeah. Great choice. Great decision. Good call. Good call. <laughs> Overruled. Well, and I mean, to be a 6'3", 218-pound safety is... It's Cam Chancellor right, right there, right? Right. It's not too many of those dudes of that size playing that, that position, but 6'3", 218, wide yeah. receiver. So in drafting this guy, up. you're going to get an immediate red zone threat. He plays great in the red zone. Uh, I don't have the touchdown numbers in front of me, but they're they're pretty solid every year at SMU. Um, Left a lot on the field, too, with the bad quarterback did, play did leave a lot on the field and he he's a guy that i'm i'm actually would be pretty excited to get on my team and judging by your room and and how people like him he could very well fall pretty far down the first round sure and be a be a decent frame and yeah i'd be decent, all over uh, taking this dude late in the first round a decent uh prospect to to scoop up and put on your team yeah once those big once those big running backs are gone and Rojo's gone and Carry On's gone and well, I think Carry On will be hanging around for you. I think Carry On will be hanging oh, around. Yeah. Well, if Carry On's there, much longer than Sutton's hanging around. Yeah. Well, then sure. I probably got to go Carry On then. Yeah. Well, that's something you're gonna have to call on draft day. I know. You gotta feel it in your plums. I think I'm gonna take. I think I would rather take Sutton, and I'll I'll just roll the dice on. I'll probably be able to get Carry On in the next round. Hmm. All right. I don't like Carry On. gets so disrespected. He even had a good combine. So yeah, well, depends. I bet on who it's you back up. To. I bet, but the combine. I bet that yeah. moved him back up. I don't think so. I haven't seen him anywhere near, except for the bottom of the first to middle second. All right. Well, let's let's move on from Cortland. Let's take a quick break. We'll be back in uh, a little bit more rookie wide receiver talk. Getting it in for your pleasure. Welcome back in, everyone. You're listening to the FF Dynasty's Married to the Game. We're breaking down rookie wide receivers for your pleasure. If you'd like to join in the discussion, hit us up on Twitter at the FF Dynasty. If you feel so inclined, we'd love to hear from you. We're gonna we're gonna get into a little Anthony Miller. He's uh, one of my favorite players to watch. Sure, he did not participate in the combine. He, so we're gonna have to we're gonna have to rely on good old film for this what one. What a bummer, man! But he did. He had a he had a fractured foot in the yeah. bowl game. Kept him out of the Senior Bowl. His pro Kept day is like April seventh. I don't know if uh, if he's gonna be full go full speed ahead for that or not, but that'll be something to to tune into since he didn't run at all or do any of the drills or any of the sure stuff at the combine. So just gonna have to go based off what we saw on tape, which I really enjoyed pretty much the whole the whole thing. Yeah, I mean the first thing that stands out to you is is just the consistency of of what he did. Uh, no. You could knock the competition a little bit if you want, but each year in 16, played 13 games, 95 yard or 95 receptions, 1,400 yards, average 15 a play, uh, and 14 touchdowns. Then this year he comes back and pretty much does the same damn thing. 96 catches, 1,400 yards, 15 yards uh, per catch, and then adds four more touchdowns with 18. So just Strong. consistent in, in crushing – the competition that he was facing. And that's all he can really do. This guy's a walk on, didn't Tough. get recruited, had to uh come and earn everything on the field. He's just got the mentality of working hard for everything, always Love on the that. grind, nothing taken for granted. Chip on um, his shoulder. And then all that kind of just shows on the field, you know? Absolutely, man. This dude this dude plays all over the field. He's a pretty solid route runner. We'll get into a little bit of that here in a minute. I like his ability to to dive and make the play, make the catch versus just trying to run under it. 
And he's got those late hands that we've been talking right. about with a lot of these dudes. He waits till the last the second. Defender. I really like that. Um, I mean, everything just seems tight, compact, and quick, man. I just I love the game speed. He looks he looks fast out there. I expect yeah. him to put up good numbers in a combine situation. Um, but you know, he just it's not fast all the time. He varies his game speed. He he will delay and he will give you hesitation and he will try he does his best to like keep you off balance and then exploit that right well you mentioned that he played all over he, he did um i think uh at the next level he might mostly be kind of in the slot here um but given his experience and the diversity at the college level i think it could open up the possibilities of the next level which give could possibly give kind of the right oc um just something a, a whole a bunch of vari- right a chess piece that could be good but I, I do i think he'll primarily be operating out of the slot um but i think he's a really fun and exciting player to watch how you hand this guy the ball and good luck bringing him down he kind of did everything for this team every time they needed a big play he was their guy um the offense kind of ran through him memphis kind of lost their offensive coordinator to notre dame chip long you hardly saw any decline in what was going on in fact he improved um now, uh, Daryl Dickey took over, but Mike Norvell, who is the head coach, is pretty much calls the plays, and they kind of have like an more of like an overseer at the offensive coordinator position. Um, and then the kind of style that they run is the is the uh, tons of RPOs. Basically, the coach was kind of saying in an interview that I read that they run a lot of the same plays out of uh, basically just different formations, and will highlight like a different player coming out of those different formations. Um, so they call it, you know, a pro style with spread tendencies. And they said, you know, we're, we're going to they could give us a speeding ticket this year for how fast we're going <laughs> to run our offense. And that's kind of their M.O. and what they want to do. I will say watching kind of Riley Ferguson, we've been talking a lot of bad quarterback play. And he's got some mediocre stuff on, on his resume, too. But he's fun to watch. He's he's elusive. He could get away from you and he's got a really strong arm. He can kind of make the throw from anywhere on the field, which all ha- helps Anthony Miller get to that you know, 96 catch threshold there. And I I had a lot of fun actually watching Ferguson play. Yeah, I agree, man. He was slinging it. 96 catches is a shit ton of catches in college for one year. And just the the back-to-back consistency is... Love that. What you're looking for. Wasn't a fluke. Wasn't a flash in the pan. He came up and backed it up. Really enjoy that. This dude has a various, you know, display. He's got various release moves off the line of scrimmage. Um, the UCLA game comes to mind. He sure. had those dudes on skates the whole, the whole time, game. which I know they were like the 122nd ranked defense in the nation, yeah. which is poor to quite poor. But he tweeted out before the game how this is the walk-ons versus the you know the five stars, five star recruits, and then came yeah. out there and and he just he put it on him and just beat them boys. Right, nine catches, 185 yards, two touchdowns. You love to see your dude eat against the bad defense, but he had this he had these boys on skates the whole game. Like I don't know, I don't know the, all the names of the various release moves. I can I can identify different ones. I don't know what the technical name is, but there's this one play that comes to mind. We're gonna call this release move the double shuffle step. <laughs> if I was if I was naming release moves, that's what I'd go with. But he basically gave this defender like two stutter steps. It was these two delayed stutter steps, and then a quick jab and a cut. And like I had to rewatch that play several times just to see what it was that he did because it was all so the quick that and he did so, right. And then, like, this defender had no clue which way this cat was going. Right. Like, it was over. He could have he could have jabbed and cut any time he wanted to, but he, he set him up. And then it was, like, a, it was basically a post route. The ball was thrown a little bit behind him. He adjusts to the ball, catches it behind his body, breaks a, immediately breaks a tackle, and then he's off to the races. And I right. can't remember if he scored on that play, but I know it was a, it was a big hitter. And it was just – it was awesome to see. Um, it, it just it – there was so many things. I know you hate to – to put it all in one play, but man, when he broke right. that tackle by making that catch, and then and then he's, no, that, he's basically streaking through the quad to the gymnasium right. at that the point. Show, that showcased all of his, a lot of his abilities. And do you think KFC still open? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, you're right. It it, it showcased a lot right. in one play. So I mean, he he can win in one on one situations like that, or he can bust your zone. Uh, I I think he has some good physicality to his game, which I really like to go along with the quick twitch and explosive feet that he has. Um, kind of keeps you guessing where you're going, and if you guess wrong, like you said, pretty much toast. Uh, he really knows how to use his body, 
and uh, will jab and lean to get a defender to open up. And, Wicked jab and, step. And, and just exploit you. Yeah, I don't know if it's like sunken hips or if it's the threat of the change of direction or whatever it is, but the, he just seems to always have cornerbacks off balance right. and out of position there, get their hips out of position, and you can exploit them any which way you want. Right, and he dominates in the in the downfield stuff with, that, with those kind of moves, and then he'll beat you with a little bubble screen, pick the way through your defense. He's got good uh, field vision, quickness, balance to kind of go along with all that stuff. He's tough, man. I love his comeback to the ball. He's never taking plays off. He comes back hard to help bail his quarterback out. If you did want to knock him for something, I guess you could criticize the hands. On occasion, you see some concentration drops. Sure. You see a fair amount of body catches. But for the most part, he comes down with the ball, which is like the main thing. I know you can knock a body catch for sure, but he comes down with the ball. He does make some business decisions over the middle of the field sometimes. But then sometimes he flashes really awesome hands, and he can make a ridiculous right. highlight catch. And he can make those grabs of balls outside of his body, and you see him contorting his yeah. his, his frame to, to make those catches. So it's right. like I think these concentration drops can, can be overlooked a little bit in, when you're evaluating a guy. Yeah, and then to, to kind of cap off all that stuff, I mean – then you go the, when you cert, when you circle one thing. Well, it's hard to circle one thing on like his counting stats or whatever you want to call it. But you know, you circle the catches and you circle the yardage and the average. But then the red zone stuff, man. He's just when he gets into that red area, he just he takes his game to even another level. He's so tough to wrangle in the red zone. Fourteen and then eighteen touchdowns. I mean, at a guy Sick who's five eleven, one ninety. That's right. These aren't. Typical things 22 you, bench press reps, so that's the only right. thing he did at the combine. But that man's strong. That is a lot. That's not typical things that you see out of a guy like this. He just he knows how to get open. He knows how to win in situations. And when the field gets condensed, he's even better, which is not normal. Absolutely. One thing we haven't really mentioned too much yet is, is his after-the-catch ability. I mean, he's basically a running back when he gets the ball in his hands. They threw him a lot of screen passes. They gave him some end-of-rounds. They just wanted to get the ball in this dude's hands any way they can. He's great in the open field. He's he's he knows when there's not much any he knows when there's no more yak to be had. And then he decides to lower his shoulder yeah. and fall forward for a few extra yards. Like I love that awareness and the ability to diagnose a situation quickly and then cut your losses and get just a little bit right. more. Yeah, no. I, and he's good at getting tackled and avoiding those hits. Right. No, and you don't, gets you don't a couple see him extra get yards. up a ton and, and, and he'll squeeze out a couple more uh, little yards falling forward. I like what I saw from him in blocking. He'll get after it. He'll block you through the whistle. I think that's going to help him. Yeah, he, he does get downfield and block. And, you know, I, sometimes he gets beat. Not the biggest guy, but he's pretty strong and he's willing to do so. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you're willing to do so and you get beat every once in a while, nobody's really going to be mad at you. Right. But there's times where he absolutely goes out there and crushes dudes. So. Right. Yeah, the willingness definitely isn't an issue. Um, this dude is really, really good against the sideline. Um, he's out there. He's got that toe drag working to Love perfection. Love the toe drag. Which I didn't, I didn't quite understand at first, like the difference between the toe tap and the toe drag, because there is a difference. And you don't want a toe tap unless you absolutely have to. But the key is, is that you don't leave the, the ground unnecessarily a lot of times these wide receivers just want to jump in the air at the ball right, well, the key there is unnecessarily right if it's and necessary you got to do what you got to do i understand if you got to go up and make right. the play but when you when you leave your feet you're leaving yourself susceptible to taking a big hit and you're also leaving yourself open to being pushed out of bounds right. and not being able to get those feet down right so there was this play um that i watched you know matt wallman break down of him getting pushed out of bounds as he's coming back to the ball against the sideline but he, he starts his toe drag like a yard and a half early and lets his body lean out of bounds towards the ball, and he makes a catch as the guy is pushing him in the back. But had he left the if he if he'd have left the ground, it wouldn't have been a catch. But like he, these are the plays you see NFL star wide receivers making on Sunday, and he's already there. He's got this. It's a technic. It's like a difficult technical thing to be able to have that concentration to fall out of bounds right. full speed with your. With no bracing of anything, you got to keep your feet down. Like it's just they yeah. make it look so easy, and it's not easy. And he no. crushes it, so no, that's absolutely. awesome. Absolutely, yeah. No, that's a that's a solid point. Love all that. So I don't know what else you got. I know. Um, I mean, basically, I I focused in on you know base the two toughest games he had all year were against the best competition was probably the two UCF games. Mm -hmm. Um, 
and the first one they definitely get the better of them um so it's not it's not the uh not the end of the world in the first game in 17 they kind of get slapped and miller has one of the worst games of his of his uh season that that uh in that, that year. in that particular game um, but he does sh- show a nice play against Mike Hughes, who's kind of a, a, a pretty solid NFL prospect. He's right now he's kind of projected as a round two guy, but they were saying, you know, maybe if he stayed another year, basically they're just projecting him in round two and not in round one because of in- inexperience, right? Not because of ability. Um, so he has him most of the game, but he does get him um, at one point in the game. He kind of gives him a little jab step outside, then releases inside. Hughes gives him a little jam and hand fights with him up the field, then kind of seems again to sell or lean outside on Hughes while still fighting with each other and then gets himself free by whipping his hips inside uses his body to shield Hughes after all that checking for a nice little grab up the seam for a first down so nice little sequence of events there to show you a kind of a variety of different moves and his kind of grittiness of uh to win against a good corner there and then in the second game he's got Clark on him uh in the beginning of the game number 14 he roasts him Every time he's pretty much on him, smoked him with a sluggo. Uh, that is just a ridiculous highlight. Nobody's even near him. Just eats that whole side of the field up. Um, was pretty much Memphis's whole offense in the second game. Like you can see him just visibly just so winded at the end of this game because he is just carrying the squad through a very talented UCF game. They do end up coming up short. Um, but Miller gets one-on-one with Hughes in the red zone in a big moment and just scorches him for the TD um, kind of sets up inside uh, plants his feet takes off outside towards the pylon gets a position on Hughes who now kind of doesn't really have the turn to the uh, time to turn around because he's he's already been beaten um, so he can't really play the ball because he's kind of already playing catch up um, so Miller uses his hands to check Hughes who's kind of now running at him and just kind of stifle him kind of mm-hmm. where he's at there and then goes up and, and, and snags the ball on a nice little fade route, I guess you could call it here. And it's a it's a huge TD with four minutes left against a top-notch uh, corner here um, and, and just shows you again that he could, he could beat and compete with some of the better guys uh, in, the, in the league or at least in college football. Like, right. Mike UCF obviously isn't the greatest team ever, but I mean, you could make a case that they maybe should have got a chance to play, you know, in yeah. in in the college football uh, playoffs here. They they beat Auburn and and Hughes is a Hughes is a really solid player. Got to so. like that, yeah. Um, that's that's awesome. There's not too many negative qualities about this guy, man. Like, really, the only one in my book is that he's 23, which. I wish I was twenty three. I do. I do wish I was twenty three <laughs> as well. I mean, same he, age as Calvin Ridley. He is. He is a little old. I think he'll be twenty four by the time the season starts. Yeah. Um, Maybe a little older than Calvin. Yeah, twenty four in October. Um, so that's it's a little bit of a knock, and we'll probably knock him, knock him down a couple of spots, maybe. Right. Um, but again, you said it to lead this thing off way back from all of our <laughs> rambling before this of how you know you'd be interested in being kind of maybe middle second, early first. Or early second, middle second, middle second, late, late second, anywhere in the second, and, and maybe picking up a guy like a like a Miller and be super Absolutely. stoked to have him. I think he's going to get disrespected. I think people aren't going to appreciate his level of work as well as much as they should. They're going to be down because they didn't get to see him crush the combine because that matters so much to everyone. It's so draining. Right. It's good to see. It's fun to watch, but like. It can show you some stuff. I like to see the athleticism graded, but... I like to see them all next to each other. I want to see you play on the field. I got to see you play on the field. Put them pads on, man. Right. Let's do it. For sure. I mean, we it's it's a nice tool. It's a part of the puzzle, I I think. But right. it's not the end all. But it's all, not so. supposed to change your mind like 180 degrees. Right. Like, trust what you see on the football field. Right. Unless you're bad at looking at what's going on in the football field and just listen to us. people probably think that we're bad just by this last hour and 10 well, they minutes ha- or whatever we they haven't did. made it this deep into the show if they like these guys <laughs> that was are the case. idiots yeah we're, we're working on it we're getting there yeah we're building we're trying to figure once this i thing figure out. out what the names of these release moves are <laughs> i'm gonna be unstoppable all right well let's raw potential over here let's finish up the last guy <laughs> michael gallup but after the break first a quick commercial break <laughs> all right we got one last Rookie wide receiver to break down here Thank for God. you. It's late. 
That's what happens when you're married to the game. Find us on Twitter, at the FF Dynasty, if you feel so inclined. We got our last dude to talk about, Mr. Michael Gallup. With a name like Gallup, I had to say my expectations were pretty high going into this evaluation. And I think overall I came out liking the guy. Maybe not. Yeah, how could you not? Loving him, but I mean, it's really, really nice to watch some of the things Likeable. he can do. And I think he's a guy that I'm definitely down to, to target late second, maybe even falls to the third. I don't know. He I didn't, don't think so. He didn't have a terrible combine. He, had, he ran a 4-5-1, which he got that down to 4-4-6 at his pro day. Yeah, was it eh? laser timed? No, nah, I mean, every, pretty much every pro day Faster. stop is, is like .05 seconds quicker. So right. it's right on poor. Poor, right on par. Um, only ten bench press reps, but thirty-six inch vert, one hundred twenty-two inch broad, six point nine five sub seven second three cone drill. Ooh. So, sub seven checks the checks the check marks there. But he's just, supposedly like everything you read on Roto World. He's like the analytical darling, and but I mean his spark score is only in the twenty seventh percentile. So I don't know if <laughs> I don't know if you have to have a good spark score to be an analytical darling. If you don't, maybe I got a shot still at maybe at being a darling, but. <laughs> I don't think so, but damn it! <laughs> well, well, it's not what my he wife had to says. go to junior college first. JUCO went to the same uh, JUCO as Byron Pringle, which a little deeper in the process here, but a guy that I'm pretty interested in from Kansas State. Yeah, was Butler Community College, so had to get his. Gra- I think it was an SAT issue for for right. Gallup. That's the first sentence on the NFL draft profile. Wow. Is SAT scores are the only thing keeping this Ooh. guy from a bigger school. Well, had to had to go figure it out. Came out still bald. I think he's like a he's one of seven kids, one of five adopted kids or something. Oh man, yeah, big family. Parents did a lot of adopting, and so he, you know, good the, for them. Good for them. <laughs> well, he'll be twenty two in March. It's not um, the worst. So he was number three in the NCAA in receptions with a hundred. Uh, this year, it's a big number. Uh, fifth in receiving yards uh, with fourteen, thirteen. Uh, in two thousand six, he was number nine in touchdown receptions. Um, so those are just kind of the numbers and and kind of records he had coming in the last two years from his junior college transfer. Uh, I don't think this guy really is a number one, but I think he's yeah. going to be a really solid piece to an offense. Uh, I do again. We'll go back to a little bit of quarterback play here. I do think that he suffered from a little bit of erratic quarterback play. The quarterback had like some good overall numbers, but when you watch the tape, there's a lot of plays that I think were left on the field uh, for Gallup. And sometimes you could see the frustration in him of being like with body language and whatnot of saying like, "Damn, man, could you just like the hitch was like the only route that right. consistently was on the money and." was there every time a lot of hitches slants and then goes but every once in a while you see don't love the vertical game from him every once in a while you see a short out i'm with you there but pretty much not too much of an extensive route tree although i do think the route running of the routes that he did run sorry for that was pretty good it's pretty quick he part of the best part of his game is he plays fast he plays quick maybe the deep deep speed isn't quite there but the short area quickness is, is really entertaining to watch. I, I would say that the short to intermediate game is strong to quite strong with, with Gallup. I would agree. I would agree. And this dude played all over the field. He was a versatile piece for them, including going into the slot. I think this guy has some of the best hands as far as fighting goes. Mm-hmm. I think, you know, he, he's he's pretty solid on his release moves coming off the line of scrimmage. Um, whether it's a slant or a fade, he's got this jump step where man, there's this one play. I think it was in the it was on the Boise State field, but it was against Idaho, not right. Boise State in I the bowl game. Maybe 16. 2016. Yeah. Yep. He had this he had this release move where he just did like this this hop step, and he took he planted both feet in one direction, and the cornerback drew into him, and then he cut the other way, and it was just, and that was on a fade in the end zone for the for the score. And I had to rewatch that play several times because, like, how did he? Is this like a two hop step? Yeah, planted both feet, and he just, just from his release movie was in his stance and then hopped and then cut, and that dude was on skates. Well, maybe Calvin Ridley should learn that movie. Be, might be better at the broad jump. Maybe, <laughs> yeah. He basically broad jumped. <laughs> 
to the right and then cut to the left. Maybe, it was maybe impressive. kind of taking like a little screen. Yeah. Sucking them in and, and, right. and moving out like that. Um, but this dude, it's just he's pretty good against the press coverage, man. Yeah. Like he just. I think the hand fighting that, w- that he does is 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 pretty solid. Yeah, and then like we can take it to the Alabama game, right? Sure. He he had a I think he had a pretty solid game against that. You and I maybe disagree. Five for eighty one. The numbers looks decent. Yeah. I don't think he had a bad game. But they, I mean, they were means. pressing him the whole time, yeah. and that didn't seem to give him too much trouble. He was beating them. One of the best plays of the game. He had like a. I don't know if it was a wax on, wax off, or it was wax off, wax on, but that that defender tried to get him two different times with a hand check, and he was meeting him right away and, right. and wiping that that hand away and to to gain that inside leverage that he, sure. he was trying to get on the play, and then he made the nice catch. It was a solid gain, one of the best plays of the game. He could have had even more yards in that game, but he dropped a big one downfield. Safety was coming over, would have made a big hit, and he just he just dropped it. I don't know, the camera angle wasn't good. The ball was thrown inside, and the camera's outside. We didn't get a replay. Couldn't really see exactly what was going on. But, I mean, for the most part, he was lining up all over the field. He showed you some yak ability there. He, was, he made a couple dudes miss. Yeah. This is still on the Alabama game. I think I think the the run after the catch is probably my favorite trait from him. I think he um, is extremely tough to bring down. Um, and, he, again, not – as much opportunity as I would like to see yeah. from the yak thing. Cause I don't think the balls were exactly where they needed to be sometimes for him to get going on the run after the catch, but it is one of my favorite parts of his game for sure. Yeah. I mean, he's, he's slippery. He's a slippery dude after the catch, he gains steam. He picks up momentum. He sets up his blockers. Well, it's, it's very instinctive. You can, you can tell he's good at it. Right. When he's getting that when he's getting that ability, when he's getting that opportunity. Right No, I mean, I think he's got, a bunch of, like I said, the short intermediate games, solid. He can win in the screen uh, with his physical nature and good field vision. Um, got a physical style of play again. Doesn't mind catching in traffic. Doesn't seem to be bothered by contact or the threat of contact. Uh, will cross the middle and win. All positive things, especially I think he's kind of a more of a possession type receiver. I think right. he'd be a great two um, on a team. Um, I think, you know, can certainly win working the boundary with quick feet. And knowing how to work a defender, knows how to use hands to separate at the top of the route, kind of see the curls and the outs. He's a karate kid out there. Yeah. Um, And then kind of when all that hand-checking takes place, uh, trying to prevent the wide receiver from making his move, he consistently wipes off defender's hands and uh, jabs him inside on those shoulder pads to create more space at the top of his break, which is fantastic, which again leads me to kind of, I like the, the, the two kind of possession role um, for this guy because he just knows how to operate in, in shorter, tighter spaces and gain separation for himself. Um, knows how to keep defenders guessing with what route he's running. Doesn't just uh, run a route one way. He has multiple ways of kind of showing the defenders of you know, how he's going to do something. He might have shown him a route kind of doing the post one way uh, the first time and then the next time it kind of looks a little different. Uh, one example is he kind of I, I don't remember I didn't note the game here but he kind of worked up field like he was running a post um, and 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 leaned kind of hard inside to hold the safety who was kind of occupying kind of the middle of the field there holds him with like a, a little lean and a pivot inside and then rips off that other foot and, and breaks it outside and and has a, a beautiful catch right, wide over open the top. over the top of the flat the corner. Touchdown. And the uh, no, this was this is just a first down. Okay, but he he held the safety in check, and the flat he was got held the safety where he needed him to be, and uh, was able to get over top of the flat corner with it with a little out basically instead of the post there, uh, which I which I thought was a really good good play by him. Um, knows how to get the defenders to turn their hips and exploit them. He'll show a defender one thing, take his first step outside, and then uh, like he's going straight up the field, and then we'll get the. Uh, defender to make his moves and turn his hips and then jump back inside uh, for an easy completion and, and could do the same thing kind of vice versa working uh, inside and then going outside so just got a whole bunch of different uh, moves and, and hand fighting things to, to gain separation can move the chains for you I think he can be a, a guy who can score touchdowns for your team um, and then I think he shows an ability to work his own Saw examples uh, many times where he switched up his route a little bit, um, 
to show the defenders one thing and get them to hold their zone and then kind of kept it moving to that free space on the field for an easy completion. All things. He's just a smart. He's just got a whole bunch of good traits. Yeah. I don't think he's like really like an elite player, but I think he does a whole bunch of things really well. All those things really, add up. Really decent. Not He's not great great right. uh, at, at any one thing, I don't think, but I think he's consistent across the board. He knows how to win. He knows how to do his job. Right. Um, so yeah, he I, seems smart. He seems like he's he's got little nuanced changes and subtleties to kind of what he's doing out there to keep you guessing, which can help make up for lack of supreme athletic ability. But, I mean, I think this dude's got great start and stop ability, which mm-hmm. is that, you know, I think he can change direction – is as good as he needs to be able to do that with, and then you combine that with the hand checking and the 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 route nuances, then you're gonna that leads to catches, man. Right. He's trying to get some catches right. here. Um, I think he's pretty fast off the line of scrimmage, although he he's knocked for being pigeon toed. Yeah. So his his front when, foot when is comes up to the line. He's bow legged, little cocked. Right. So if you if you pay attention, you you can kind of see him having to adjust that front foot a little bit off when his he's get. right. He's got to kind of yeah. take a little step almost. This is a half a step, basically. Right. Which I didn't even really notice till I read the knock about being pigeon-toed, and then I, I was like, oh, I guess I kind of see that. But, like, I mean, I, I don't know if that matters. It seemed like he was getting off Seems the line to just work fine. And, and maybe at the next level, it maybe it hinders him a little bit more, but I feel like that's probably a pretty correctable thing. Probably. Um, a couple knocks on him. Like, maybe sometimes he should lay out for the ball. Yeah, and I think sometimes maybe he doesn't want to. Right. Like that's fair. Just because he's that's fair. Another thing is he seems to jump unnecessarily at balls, man. Like that's I really really noticed that after learning what the toe drag was, watching uh, Anthony Miller, and then going to watching Gallup, and it's like he's going up in the air even when he doesn't need to, and you see him take a couple big hits because of that, and and then that leaves him susceptible to being pushed out of bounds on the sideline. So I think that's a correctable thing, but it was it was evident once you realize it that he does that a lot. But, I yeah. mean, overall, I think this dude possesses the skills to succeed at the next level, and I'm, I'm down to put him on my team because I think he's going to fall a little bit. All right, get us out of here. Let's, let's go home. Let's do it. <laughs> Hit us up on Twitter, at the FF Dynasty. We have our own individual handles. You can find Casey at IMC Myers. You can find me at Jay Wayne's World. If you didn't notice, Big Co kind of dipped out. He was here for the intro, and then uh, he had he had to, to hit a dinner to go to, and so he had dipped. to go. Started a little late, but if you listen to the show, you know he's not the biggest rookie wide receiver lover. So this is a good one for him to skip out on, I guess. But uh, if you enjoyed anything about the show, please go on iTunes, give us a five star review. You just got to click the five stars. Don't even have to write anything. Definitely hit subscribe. Find us on iTunes, Google Play, Podbean, Stitcher, TuneIn Radio, iHeartRadio. Please and thank you. Go on YouTube, hit subscribe. We're cutting up these shows and, and, and giving you a more granular search for your pleasure. So go check that out. Hit subscribe. Please and thank you again. Man, it's late. I'm rambling on, and uh, we just need to get out of here. But that's what happens when you're married to the game. Oh, you're dropping that terribleness two times in a podcast. Mm-hmm.